Hello everyone. Welcome to Static GK quiz number 104. This video is aimed to help you with your central and state government job examinations. I'm with Risha from GK today and I'll be taking you through this. Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion is a subordinate office of which of the following ministries? Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion or DIPP was first established in 1995 and then reorganized in 2000 and merged with the Department of Industrial Development. The department falls under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry and it looks at the overall industrial policies whereas separate departments specialize in specific areas allocated to them. Its main responsibility includes formulation of promotional and developmental measures to boost industrial sector. The DAVP or Directorate of Advertising and Visual Publicity is a subordinate office of which of the following. DAVP is a nodal agency to undertake multimedia advertising and publicity for various ministries. So what it does is it makes ads and uh, designs publicity campaigns for government bodies and many autonomous bodies also use DAVP as a service agency. It endeavors to communicate at grassroots level on behalf of various central government ministries. So it is of course a part of Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. So any ads you see run by the government, this is the agency that's making them. Which among the following can be called a writ of prohibition? The correct answer is a writ issued by Supreme Court or High Court to inferior court. So what writ of prohibition means is that a higher court like Supreme Court or High Court may prohibit the lower courts such as special tribunals, magistrates, commissions, etc. that something they are doing is beyond their jurisdiction or they are acting contrary to the rule of natural justice. An example would be if a judicial officer has personal interest in a case, it may hamper the decision on the course of natural justice. National Integration Council was created for making welfare measures for who? The National Integration Council or NIC was set up in June of 1962 by our then Prime Minister Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru to address the problems of communalism and regionalism in India. It is chaired by the Prime Minister of India and it has members from union ministers to leaders of opposition in the Lok and Rajya Sabha. It has chief minister of states, union territories, leaders of national and regional political parties, basically almost everyone, including eminent journalists and other public figures who can have a say in the matter. The NIC had set up standing committees, subcommittees and subgroups over the years to discuss on specific problems. The NIC is an extra constitutional body which does not have either statutory or constitutional backing. So the correct answer is all minorities. Who among the following is called the guardian of public purse? Now that would be the controller and auditor general of India. So what the controller and auditor general does is he is or she is the person who is in charge of all receipts and expenditures by the government of India and any body which is substantially financed by the government. So the correct answer is CAG. Which among the following articles of Indian constitution gives right to the Attorney General of India to speak in House of Parliament or their committee? So any and all rights or any power that the Attorney General of India has is due to the Article 76. So Article 76 revolves around the Auditor General of India. Who is the Auditor General? He is the government's chief legal advisor and the primary lawyer for the government in the Supreme Court of India. He is appointed by the President of India according to the Constitution and he holds office during the pleasure of the President. He must be a person who is qualified to be appointed as a judge of the Supreme Court. In which year first official language commission was constituted? So the correct answer is 1955. 
the first official commission was constituted under B. G. Kher as the chairman. Appointed in 1955, it submitted its report in 1956, which was presented to the parliament in 1957 and examined by a joint parliamentary committee. The system of proportional representation is used in India to elect who. Okay, before we go to that, uh, what is proportional representation? So, proportional representation is the other way of having members in governing bodies other than election. So, our upper house, like the Rajya Sabha, is actually based on proportional representation system, based on their strength in a state assembly. Political parties can nominate their members to the upper house. The same system is followed while electing members of legislative council from the state assemblies. The president also comes under this umbrella. So the correct answer here is president. The other three options we have: prime minister, governor, members of parliament. These are all elected members. Which schedule of the Indian Constitution divides the powers between union and states? So, what do you mean by divide? So, basically, there are three lists. What are these lists? One is the union list. The other is the states list. And there's one list which is common to the states and the union. That is known as concurrent list. So, the constitution provides in India. On the subject of distribution of legislative powers between union and states, defined under several articles, the most important in this regard is specifically Article 245 and 246. The seventh schedule of the Constitution of India defines these allocation of powers and functions between union and states according to these three lists. Which of the following posts is not mentioned in the Constitution? The correct answer is the Solicitor General of India. The Solicitor General is subordinate to the Attorney General of India, and he assists as the second law officer of the country. He also has people who assist him. Additional Solicitors General of India. There are four of them. Currently, the Solicitor General is Tushar Mehta. However, unlike the post of Attorney General for India, which is a constitutional post under Article seventy six, the post of Solicitor Generals of India is statutory. That is, it is not mentioned in the Constitution, but it is built according to our convenience. That's all for today's quiz. Until the next video, goodbye.